It's Sunday morning. It's dark. A woman stumbles across unfamiliar landscape, but it's a path she's been aching to take for the last couple of days, desperate to return to the place where a corpse was laid, the body of her Lord and Master, in a borrowed garden tomb. Who knows what she was planning to do when she got there? It was only on Friday that she saw the boulder rolled across the entrance. Did she think she could move it herself? In her grief, it's the last thing she thinks of. But through the gloom, she makes out. The stone's been moved. The tomb's open. Ah, oh, it's a small relief. The relief turns to panic. The tomb's open. Somebody's taken his body. Well, let's read that story, shall we? You can read along in your own Bible, uh, or on the service sheet, or on the screen. We'll be reading from John chapter 20, uh, from verses 1 to 18. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb, and so she went running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. And following him, Simon Peter also came. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, then also went in, saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they've put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it that you are seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Don't cling to me. Jesus told her, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord! And she told them what he had said to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thinks Mary, was it not enough that they'd killed him, an innocent man? Couldn't they just leave him in peace? Give the few friends he had a left a moment to pay their respects, this poor woman. Mary is her name, Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, Having read your word, we pray that you will open our hearts to show us what you want us to see in your word, uh, that we might believe and we might be who you want us to be in Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. See, Mary's life had been tied to this man. So now she's lost everything. Well, she doesn't stop at the tomb to investigate, but she rushes back to Peter and to John, the disciple Jesus loved, two of her travelling companions, also in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. 
like her, they're in shock. Through tears she blurts, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Well, the men are stunned, but they check her story. Yes, the body of Jesus isn't there. But what's more strange, the clothes he was wrapped in, they've been neatly folded and placed. They know that there's something here more than meets the eye, but then they just return to the guest house. But Mary stays. First grief, then frustration, but now she's bewildered. And as she weeps, she bends down to confirm what her friends have just told her. But she's greeted with something quite different, isn't she? Two men who asked a strange question, it seemed to her. Why are you crying? Well, she tells them what she first told Peter and John. I don't know where they've put him. Now there's another man behind her. He's outside. It's no one she recognises. Dear woman, he says, which I think is how you could translate uh, verse 15. Like the man in the tomb, he's polite, but why do they all ask the same question? Why are you crying? Don't they know what's happened? And then another odd question from this man outside. Who is it that you're seeking? Who is it that you're seeking? Who are you looking for? Who is Mary looking for? Well, friends, she is looking for the man who had given her purpose, who gave her life. Let's take a flashback. Well, she first met him back home in Galilee. Life at the time for her was something like hell. She was possessed, under the control of demons. She was probably shunned by all but her family's closest friends until she met him. By his own authority, he commanded the evil spirits within her to leave and they simply obeyed. And then she knew freedom, not just from that dark bondage, but a freedom of peace that came with his presence. And the direction of her life from then on was this. Wherever he went, she followed. She's one of several women who, over the next three years, travel with and support this man, this this Jesus, and his closest disciples. She's there as he heals others uh, with the same compassion and authority that freed her. She hangs off his every word, his teaching. I am the good shepherd, he'd said. I lay down my life for the sheep. She doesn't always understand the teaching, but she knows the trouble that his teaching and his miracles gets him into. Many oppose him. Who could know why? She wondered at the time where it would all end up. But now, on this bleak Sunday morning, the answer's all too clear. How could it go so horribly wrong? Just two days before, she's witnessed the horrific crucifixion of the man who had rescued so many. He'd always been in control, but now he was the one that needed rescuing. But none came. At the end of it all, she saw where they laid his body. And now who was Mary seeking? A dead man. A dead saviour. She'd lost more than a teacher because his teachings made no sense without him. They were so often about himself, who he was and what he'd come to do. He'd said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And then he'd raised a man from the dead. But what could that mean now? Now that Jesus himself was dead. He wasn't just a teacher to her. She thought she'd found the Messiah. Yes, he'd healed her brokenness, but surely he was the one to heal the brokenness of the whole world. Surely this was the promised one. He'd said, 
I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And she'd seen that light, she thought. So who was she seeking? Well, no longer a Messiah, but the memory of one. The one that had carried her hopes and dreams with him, now to the grave. His death now mocked those hopes and dreams. Death even mocked her tears. So with all that going on for Mary, that man's questions, they sound almost cruel, don't they? Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? There's salt in the wounds, aren't they? Unless he knows something that she doesn't. Why do you think he's asking? Of course it's Jesus, risen from the dead. So it's not like he doesn't know the answer. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? Mary, Mary. We could say to her, You were devoted to him. Far, far more than most. You were the first one at the tomb to show your devotion, to pour out your grief at the loss. With the death of Jesus, you feel that you yourself have died. But Mary, even you've missed the truth. Yes, of course you were right to devote yourself to him. But all the wonderful things you thought he was, he was infinitely more. Of course he was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. But that title means so much more than even you've realised. Dear, dearest woman, why are you crying? By now you could be rejoicing. You should be rejoicing. Friends, that's what's behind Jesus' question. Who is it that you're seeking? Mary with all hope gone. You're seeking a few more precious moments with your dead, would-be saviour. And that would be good and right and healthy if he was dead. But Mary, right now you think your hopes are dashed, but they're not. Your hopes and your dreams of the satisfaction and the peace and the contentment and the purpose you found when Jesus met you. They are all perfectly safe right now in Jesus' own vault. Mary, what you imagined Jesus to be, it was far too small. Couldn't he do all the things he promised? Didn't you believe that he willingly died to take the punishment for the sins of his people, including you, Mary? Didn't you believe that he would rise, conquering death, just like he said he would? Oh, Mary, what grief you could have been spared. But it's okay, Mary. Few had your devotion to Jesus, but no one truly understood him. So Mary was seeking someone in whom she thought she'd found life, and she was right. She didn't fully understand him, but she put her hope in him. She was convinced he was the Messiah, though she didn't know all that that title really meant. And now Mary hears the most wonderful sound she could imagine, her own name from his lips, Mary. Well, that's Mary. What about you? Who is it that you're seeking? Who are you looking for? Where are you going to find life? Where might you look to give life purpose, to find satisfaction and fulfilment and peace, a peace unshakable, even by a virus that's brought the world to its knees? Is it another person? Your mum or your dad, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, your soulmate, your family, your grandkids. Or perhaps the person that you'll find life in is you. 
you'll find life's purpose for yourself in toys or hobbies or maybe a secure house, job satisfaction or career or school achievements, uh, moving into a, a contented career or, or in retirement, which then settles hopefully into peaceful old age. Well, perhaps a fulfilled life, a life uh, seems like a different flavour for you, caring for your fellow man or, or your environment. But friends, I need to tell you today that wherever you are seeking life, you have an enemy that's going to make a mockery of your search. And the deeper you plunge into that thing to find life, the louder this enemy will mock. It will mock your every attempt to find meaning in life. You see, friends, that enemy is death. Death takes with it the loved one that you've been searching for life in. Death mocks everything you achieved for yourself and for anyone else. Death is the enemy of your relationships, your achievements, your possessions. Why talk about death today? Isn't it Easter Sunday? It's supposed to be a happy day. I mean, Mary's just discovered that Jesus is alive. Well, Mary Magdalene, friends, helps us to think wisely about death. She's put her, her, her hopes in the only place where death cannot mock these hopes. She's placed them in the one who conquered death. And he conquers death for all those who put their hope in him. Mary approached the tomb with the voice of death mocking her last three years of hope. Little did she know she'd put that hope in the only safe place. Friends, she would ask us what Jesus asked her. Who is it that you're seeking? Friends, can I beg you, don't seek life in anyone else but Jesus Christ. He is the only safe place from death. But perhaps you've placed your hopes and your life in this Jesus. Well, that's wonderful, friends. But can I urge you to keep seeking him? See, Mary found what she'd been looking for in Jesus years before in Galilee. But a vision of Jesus was too small, wasn't it? And so is mine, and so is yours. We still need to seek to know Christ better. The person, what it means to take him at his word and live like it. What it means to walk with him. What it means to keep placing our hope in him. What it means to be weaned off those other things where we think we'll find life. Find fulfillment. <coughs> Has COVID unexpected, in, unexpectedly given you a, a lot more free time? Where did your instincts take you when you thought about how you'd use it? Friends, we need to feel what it means for Jesus to be like a distant lover. One who you'd long to be re reunited to. Do you long to be with him? like Mary did. Well, do you think that sounds a bit sentimental? Well, friends, fellowship with God through Jesus, it's what we're made for. Fellowship with him, uninterrupted by the threat of death. This is the only place, the only one, in whom you'll find fulfilment and peace and contentment. Who is it that you're seeking? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at Mary, one who was devoted to Christ and yet she didn't fully understand him, Lord, may we, like her, put our hope in the only place that it is safe, safe from the threat of death. Father, may we put our hope in Jesus Christ and we pray in his name. Amen.